Archives. Yeah. <laughs> Greetings, posterity. Let's let's introduce ourselves, shall we? Mike. I'm John. <laughs> Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Bridget. Pity damn it. And I'm Hermione. We're backstage at the 19th Meredith Music Festival with the OCs. Wow, 19th. Huh? Yeah, I know. 19th. Yeah, not in years. Yeah, definitely. Two years legal in America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, you guys have played your set. Um, how did you find playing to the crowd at Meredith? It was great. Yeah, yeah. Very good. it was a good crowd of people dancing far off to the left. That I'm pretty sure we're probably on something hilarious because there's one guy like I was really <laughs> focused. I mainly just found him in the crowd and like honed in on him like a laser and watched him and drew my inspiration from that man dancing in the uh, wicker cowboy hat. I saw a Scooby Doo and a Where's Waldo and it kept cracking me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Scooby Doo for real? Yeah, yeah. I've seen a, I've seen a gorilla. gorilla. Yeah. I saw Mario. Someone's dressed up like yeah. Mario. Mario. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nothing yeah. can find me in the crowd. It's a fun crowd. Yeah. Um, and I noticed that you guys have got a, a friendship with one of the bands who was on yesterday, the Witch Hats. How did you actually meet Witch Hats? I, uh, I met them online, basically, and uh, they were, I think it was via Eddie Kern, Mikey and Eddie Kern, Suppression Ring, and uh, he, he emailed me about them, and then I got in touch with them, and I set them up a show at this Leather Daddy Bar in SF, which was really fun, and we did a couple other shows with them randomly, just because they were from Australia, and we wanted to show them hospitality, which we're totally getting back tenfold now, you people are great. Yes. And, uh, yeah, they were. They stayed at my house for five days, and there was a lot of partying, and it was pretty hilarious. I ran into them this morning, and uh, they were like, like they had one bit of fly. He's like brushing his teeth. I was like, morning. He's like, oh my god, what are you doing here? Kind of thing. So that was cool. Is that kind of community support really important to you guys? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. For sure. Yes, it's uh, very much. Yeah. Without that, we wouldn't have half the great shows that we play. Yeah. It's all about. Uh, you know, uh, I would gladly uh, help out anyone in Australia that uh, was that was so close. <laughs> this is part of the archival push too. Shut that goddamn door. You use that lock button. But uh, yeah, there's a band that I dig from over here. We just met um, the band UV Rays, and I'm really uh, excited for them to maybe come over to San Francisco because I feel like uh, we also met uh, Bat Rider. Yeah. And they uh, they said they did 40 shows in America, but they hadn't uh, played yeah. San Francisco somehow, which is 40 shows in America is a lot of shows. You can yeah. do it in like 25 ish if you rush. But to miss San Francisco, yeah, to miss San Francisco. Yeah. So what's the San Francisco scene like at the moment? Is it healthy? Is it thriving? Is yeah, it, always yeah? kind of. There's like lulls, but for the most part, so I've lived there for 11 years, and it's uh, it's been pretty great. You know, this every year that I'm always surprised by the crop of like young kids doing shit and the uh, old dudes and women uh, getting back on the horse and making something brand new out of the, the ashes. That's it's always been a pretty good artistic community, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, I would say it's very big and diverse. Yeah, very, very big and diverse. And big gay community there yep. too. And yes. Lots of art, like, art Our favorite bar to play there is the Leather Daddy Bar. It's like we pretty much <laughs> exclusively play there. The only time we play, I'm not kidding. It's like we have a residency there. The only time we play outside of there is when somebody offers us a bunch of money in a show we probably don't really yeah. want to play. Like at a museum, they're like, we'll give you $2,000 to play here. And I'm like, fuck it. All right, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, leather Daddy? Leather Daddy, like, you know, yeah. big, big Bear Daddy bar, like uh, fire pits and men in leather suspenders. Basically, when we go in there, I'm the only woman. When we go and go in there, stuff, and, and, then later, and then it fills up, too. you know, because it's like. Aaron Dyke's there too, calm down. <laughs> but uh, no, it's, it's a great, it's my favorite spot. I would recommend anybody uh, from Australia uh, that's coming through there to try to get show at the SF Eagle yeah, Tavern. Lovely. Now, I, I was reading that the OCs has kind of evolved out of um, a, a home recording solo project of yours. So how did it become a band? Do you really feel more like a band now and less like a solo project oh, that, yeah. for performing live? Yeah, for sure. It was um, it was just like something I was doing when I was bored at home or stoned when I was working with other bands. It'd be something I'd just do at home to like, keep the blood flowing in the... And then every you know other bands I was in would slowly break up or I'd get sick of the people like you know I was younger then and now we get along good mostly and um, <laughs> it's just like uh, yeah I brought these guys in and it, I wanted to do it live you know and it became like sort of all the bands I've been doing over the years I like, encompass them into like one band sort of so I don't have to run around anymore I can just do one thing it's like a monogamous serial monogamous band relationship. So everyone was people that you knew from the band community and mm -hmm. big um, techno werewolves Trey Ferocious he played in. Uh, Bloodstool, unfortunately. <laughs> a lot of good bands. <laughs> she was in a band called Mixtape, which was with uh, uh, Merrick Long from the Dodos, who've probably been over here a bunch, oh, yeah. I'm sure. Uh, Mike was in a band called Cessiera and a band called The Soft Hot Shits years ago. <laughs> and amazing. I saw John's uh, the first time uh, Pink and Brown played. Uh, I think that was at the Edinburgh? Edinburgh? At the Edinburgh Castle. Wow, yeah. that was, yeah, he saw the very first show I ever played in San Francisco where. Uh, I think the show started where I just ran on the crowd and knocked over. I knocked over a table and this guy's like, hey! <laughs> and I was like, welcome like, to San Francisco! John got all down, down in it, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> so what's been your experience of playing festivals and um, what's your general impression of, of Meredith? 
Meredith is great, the people are great. I mean, I haven't really gotten a chance to wander around the crowd so much yet. It looked like there was a lot of uh, attractive young people and oh, a lot of wasted so people in costume. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's it's, must be the distilled lighting bouncing off the farm. But um, yeah, it's been great. You know, I got no complaints. The stage crew was really cool. It sounded good up there. Uh, Nikki Reed, who booked our whole tour, got us on this, and Eddie Kern let us borrow their stuff, so I can't say thank you enough to them, you know. I'm that's, just thankful to be here. That's much. that's where you really feel like the support of other musicians, isn't it? Like Absolutely. You need to, you oh, I wouldn't even be standing here. here. Yeah. Me and Nikki literally, like, she just wrote me, or oh, her and this this uh, psychopath named Tom Martin, who's not here, unfortunately. He'd be great for his interview because he'd be doing it in his wife fronts. <laughs> All hairy. Yeah. Remind me of home. It's a but, um, man. Yeah. Yeah, I got, I, everybody's just been really gracious and uh, open. A lot of, like, staying at random people's houses and pool parties and we're going to the beach tomorrow which I'm so excited about because we're uh, we like the beach and it reminds us of home so it's nice to be out somewhere else and like find a moment where you're like this reminds me of home as I'm eating a taco in the sand <laughs> which I often do at home. Is San Francisco like Melbourne? I mean is it similar? More I would say uh, there, are, there are places I don't know about San Francisco being like anywhere here maybe a little bit Sydney but it's Sydney's trans. yeah yeah we do have, we have, we do have public <laughs> transport it's, uh, and running water and sewers but um there are pieces of uh, of Australia that really reminded all of us. And, like we'd all be like, I'd be like, this doesn't look like like uh, right outside of Austin, Texas. And the car's like, oh my god, I'm so to say that. Like we'll just be driving like if there's not a kangaroo or something like right there that's inherently Australian. I'm like, God, this reminds me so much of because we do all these drives across country, so we'll be in the middle of nowhere. And there's a lot of moments that are like weirdly. Uh, it just makes you realize that the world's not so big. You know, I see things yeah. that look really familiar, even though I've never been here before. I suppose America, like Australia, is like vast distances between yeah. cities Australia as is well. Fucking huge. Not I like had no idea. Yeah. I thought you guys were like a seven square mile. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I knew it was big, but uh, actually, like, I'm so lazy that because Nikki booked this, I haven't even looked at a map. Then we got here. I was looking at a map. And I was like, Holy crap! Australia's enormous. It's like. Man, you guys could be uh, uh, the next big world power, just act like a bunch of assholes like Americans. And <laughs> the now, middle wasn't completely desert. You know? It's so funny that they, a lot of Australians went like, like, ooh, a McDonald's, and I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but then we're back home, and I'm like, ooh, Croc Hunter and a Foster's, and everybody's like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> so Yeah, it, it doesn't tend to be the, the really impressive things that travel. Does it? Well, that's a good thing, though, because yeah. you wouldn't want all the great things from Australia to actually be, like, blown out of proportion and uh, on American television, God forbid, you know, like... Uh, it's been really great discovering things about the country. Well, you're all drinking Coopers, I noticed. This is yeah. the excellent Australian. This, 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 is actually, this is actually South Australian, which is where I'm from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's because this one that's proud about The bits floating in it. Yeah, that's yeah. how you got to do the roll. Yeah, thing. yeah. yeah. Well, I haven't done the roll yet, but everybody's like, oh, it makes your stomach all fucked up, and then you can't really? see, and I'm like, it sounds horrible. Um, really? <laughs> this has bits in it? It's on a it's on really like wine. It's got sediment at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I like we, wine. Had, what was it called? Like gobby on the line or some shit? Like sack wine oh, uh, trick? Oh, goon. 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 Bag. goon. goon bag. Yeah, we did that in a pool the other night. And I didn't know how it worked, so basically I had all these like girls holding a bag of wine at me. And I was like, all right, right. Like, just goon. push the button. Goon. And they yell at goon. I pushed the button and it just sprayed in my eyes in the pool. I was like, ah! I like blind myself with white wine. Those bags are great for you camping though because they're an emergency pillow. You just blow them up and they're out of wine. Everybody says that. You can push the thing Very resourceful. Yeah, you can't you can't blow up a Cooper's again after you've drank it now, can you? Yeah, <laughs> or, or use a propeller. I haven't used a propeller, used a propeller on this trip though, yeah. <laughs> oh. This packed in flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> and so, what's next for you in like in your trip in Australia? You're doing more shows and. We have one show tomorrow in a town called Lorne. 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 And That's where the Falls Festival is, is that right? Is it? Uh, you guys have so many festivals here I can't even keep track. It's yeah, like a yeah. land of festivals and, uh, and, and beers with pits in them. That's it, yeah, you get bored, start a festival. No? Yeah, yeah, there you go. No, it's, well, it's funny because America has a lot of festivals, but they're really shit, kind of. Uh, I like South by Southwest, as I think we all have a good time to have friends there, and it's fun, but it's like CMJ New York, which is such an industry thing. It's it's really not. It's pretty way. Is Coachella a nice one? That's in Never been. Is that We've right? heard it's great. Yeah, that, the um, people who talk about. Um, who have, like say Meredith's a nice one from overseas often compare it with Coachella. It's it's weird dealing with I, I don't know about here but dealing with like um, uh, the festival vibe in America um, it can be really like uh, sterile and just a lot. It's, yeah corporate. Not, I don't know if Coachella's corporate. I mean I guess they have Paul McCartney and McDonald's. So they probably are. It's <laughs> probably a little tiny McDonald's in there somewhere. But uh, yeah we we're just not we're not it's not really familiar territory for us. We don't we've just played a festival in New York. We've maybe done very few festivals. Yeah, I can like count on both hands how many festivals we've played. Three? No. Yeah. Something. But they usually offer a bunch of money, so hey, put in a request and we'll talk. But I would also play a bathroom, you know, I don't really care. So yeah. we, we find ourselves more comfortable in like the intimate setting, like a bar, you know, what we're familiar with. But uh, this, one, this one actually has a really good vibe, I have to say, for a, for a three-day affair. I'm sure by the end of the third night, it's a... Uh, 
it's quite a mess. There's lots of like mud in people's eyebrows. And <laughs> I've noticed uh, everybody under 22 has twigs in their hair. I don't know what the fuck happened here last night, but it's hilarious. It's like I looked around, I was like, was there some sort of like hay throw down or an orgy? Or like everybody, everybody's back is covered in dirt, and they're all like, hey. well, there's a naked foot race. Ah. That's tomorrow. That's oh. like a, a, one of the well, Meredith. Um, she is so fast when she's nude. That's okay. I'm gonna get that on camera. <laughs> yeah, I got my boobs. It's Cooper's bits. I, 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 I will not be doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, it's um, a sack race. Maybe just with a t-shirt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Porky picking it. Yeah. A classic American. Yeah. yeah, I've never entered it myself. I'm, I'm not fast anyway. So. Yeah, I'm not fast nor do I have a naked. <laughs> I was just thinking maybe um, we'll get you guys to say a hello to the camera just to, for the Meredith Records, like hello okay. with the OCs to the camera and like that would be great. Go B to go. Hello with the OCs. <laughs> hello. Hey, thanks for having us. I'm John thank with the OCs. You. Yes, thank you. It's been a lot of fun so far.